Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. I'm going to start working on some uh, some practice hypothesis testing practice problems for you. Um, I think I'd, I'd like to get to two in this video, but these take a little bit longer than the stuff we've been working on, so I might only get to one, um, in which case I'll just record another video. It's kind of long. Um, but yeah, let's get started. I'll read the question and then we'll go through it. Individuals filing federal income tax returns prior to March 31st received an average refund of $1,056. Consider the population of last-minute filers who mail their tax returns during the last five days of the income tax period, typically April 10th to April 15th the period there. Um, part A, take these in order. A researcher suggests that a reason individuals wait until the last five days is that on average these individuals receive lower refunds than new early filers. Develop hypotheses such that rejection of the null hypothesis, H0, will support the researcher's contention. Okay, so we're going to do is we're going to let x equal the return to an, to uh, a last minute filer. This makes sense, right? I mean, this guy's a researcher. He says, well, maybe the reason they're not filing on time is because they they're not going to get as much money, right? People who get money want to rush to get the money, and people who don't who aren't going to get money, they don't they'll, they'll take their time. So if we have x <coughs> as the return to the last minute filer, we have mu x is the population mean return, right? And our hypotheses for now, because we're doing one sample, population mean, our hypotheses are going to be about the value of mu x. We have to be careful how we define it in order to make to make the hypotheses make sense. But what we want is for the question is asking us that rejection of the null will support the researcher's contention. What that means is that we want to put the researcher's contention in the alternative so you can try to prove it true. A lot of times it's easier to do the alternative first. So the alternative, what he's saying is that um, these people, late filers, receive less than the average. Uh, for other people. The other people receive an average of 1056. So what he's saying is that mu x is less than 1056, 1056 dollars. That's the researcher's contention. Right? Now the null, what we're going to assume is that in fact the researcher is wrong. They receive more than or equal to 1056. This way, we're giving uh, the benefit of the doubt to the argument against the researcher, which means that if he proves this to be, if he proves the null false, then he's given a strict test. He really knows that this is true. Okay, so this is part A. We have our two hypotheses written down. So that's and that's step one, right? Um, step two uh, is usually choose a level of significance. I'm going to pull it from part C just so I can write it out. We have alpha equals 0.05. Um, actually, I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to try to put all my information that I need on this side. Um, mu zero, that's the mean under the null, is going to be taken from the right side. It's 1056. So we have that information already. We also have a sample size. We do. Um, or not yet, we will. Okay, part B. For a sample of 400 individuals who file a tax return between April 10th and 15th, the sample refund was $910, the sample mean refund, so x bar equals 910. Based on prior experience, a population standard deviation of sigma equals 1600 may be assumed. What is the p-value? So we're still in a sigma known world, we're assuming we know sigma, we'll get away from that later. For now we're going to assume we know it. They're asking us what the p-value is. Okay, so what is the p-value? Is essentially saying, if the null is true, What's the probability that we would get, right? If the null hypothesis is true, if the mean population return is actually greater than or equal to 1,056, what's the probability that we would get a sample mean as low as we did? Right? That's what the p-value is. Because it's, right, we're doing left tail test, so what that means is, what's the probability that ours is this low? Because it's really low, it's 910. Um, and so the way we can do this, we can turn this into a normal distribution question. First, we draw the hypothesized null distribution. Uh, null sampling distribution, right? This is the sampling distribution of x bar under the null, assuming that the null is true. So in the middle is mu zero, which is 1056. Mu zero. 
and we know the shape of this now, right? Sigma x equals 1600. And we want to know, uh, what's the probability that we would get an x bar of 9, 10 or lower if the null is true? Uh, okay. So step one was this. Step two is this, is uh, choose a level of significance. Step three is choose a test statistic. Um, which really, and I'll show you in this example, later we can just use the test statistic, but I'll show you in this example. What we're really doing is we're just relating it to the standard normal curve. Right. Popping it down here. We have Z, 0 and 1. Um, and if we use the score function, then you can see that this is pretty straightforward. Uh, 0 x bar, sorry, this should be over a square root of 400. I did that wrong. I apologize. It's correct now. because That's what we actually want is sigma x bar, not sigma x. Um, this is the sampling distribution. This is the, the standard normal distribution. And when we're relating them, what we'll get is our test, our correct test statistic. The test statistic here is this. Z equals x bar minus mu zero over sigma x divided by the square root of n. That's our test statistic. And all it is is what is what you end up with in the score function if you relate these, right? It's just a standard normal, or it's just a normal distribution problem because of all the stuff we've been learning about. Okay. Do we have the stuff we need? Well, let's see. We have an x bar. We have a mu zero. We have a sigma x. We have an n. So we can move on to step four. Just compute the value of this test statistic. It's a tough word to say. Okay. So what is z going to be? <coughs> it's going to be... 910 minus 1056 divided by 1600 over the square root of 400. It's kind of hard to read that writing. I apologize. 910 minus 1056 over 1600 divided by the square root of 400. Make this a little bit thinner so I can go over to Excel and plug that in. Okay. There we go. <coughs> we have equals 910 minus 1056. That's the numerator. The denominator is going to be 1600 uh, equals 1600 divided by the square root of 400, which is 80. That's correct. Okay, now we take the top one, negative 146, divided by the bottom one, 80, and get negative 1.825. Okay, negative 1.825 is our value of z. So we can write that z equals negative 1.825 this right here. Okay, now the p-value for a left-tailed test, right, is good, and we know it's a left-tailed test because of the hypotheses. We want to know what's the probability that we'll be low, right, or could that like, we'd be even lower than this. So, what we want to know is this area right here, and that's our p-value. So what is our p-value? Well, now we need to bust out our, uh, our z-table. So let me get that out. We have negative 1.8, yeah, we'll call it negative 1.83 for now. Choose a different pen, it's purple for now. Okay, so we have negative 1.83, but because z the z distribution is symmetric, we know that uh, positive 1.83 is the same area. So 0.4664 is this area here. It's going to be 0 0.4664. Okay, what does that mean our maroon area is? Well, it's going to be what's left. So we take 0 0.5000 minus 0 0.4664. This was step three, by the way. This is step four. And right now we're moving on to step five. Um, we subtract this. We have 10, 9, 9, 4, 0. Uh, Three, three, six. And that's our p value. p value equals 0 0.0336. How do we interpret that? Well, that's saying that the chance that we would get a sample of 910 if the true population mean was 1056 is about 3%. Okay, uh, so that's part B. What is the p value? 3.36%. Part C says, well, using the alpha, the and pulled out earlier, what's your conclusion? Okay, well our conclusion is going to be that 
we said our alpha means that if there is less than a 5% chance, if there's less than alpha, we reject the null. And so we look, is our p-value less than alpha? Is 0 0.33, 0 0.0336 less than 0 0.05? Yes. So reject. We reject the null. We accept the alternative that, that which is that oh, late filers get less. Not surprising in some sense, and in another sense, it makes a nice little article. Okay. Uh, they want us to also do it with a critical value approach. To do the critical value approach, what we do is we just choose a level of Z first that has 0 0.05 in the tail. Uh, the level of Z that has 0 0.05 in the tail is going to be the value of Z that's like right here, right? Where this is now 0 0.45. You can look that up. Uh, it's going to be 1.645, right? right in here. It's right in between these two. And so what we do then is we say, okay, well, our critical Z or Z alpha is equal to negative 1.645. And then what that means is everything to the left of that is the rejection region. When we get our Z, we find that it's further away from zero than that. Negative 1.825 is further in the tail. So that means, uh, that means we reject using that method as well. We just compare our, our test statistic to the critical value. Ours is in the rejection region, so that means that we reject that way too. They both should always lead to the same conclusion, the p-value approach and the critical value approach. Okay, so that's one question. I'll do uh, another one in another video. Thanks, guys. See you again soon.